Welcome everybody. What I'd like to do is show you how to use the power rule of exponents. So a couple things about the power rule of exponents. The power rule of exponents states is if we have a number raised to a power and that number raised to a power is raised to another power, what I can do to simplify that is to multiply our two exponents. So let's take a look at, let's say I had a number three raised to the second power. Now we know that answer is nine, right? But what happens when you have three squared and then it's raised to the sixth power. What exactly does that mean? How could I maybe figure this out if I don't know how to type this in my calculator? Well, let's take a look at it. We know that three squared equals three times three, right? Well, what happens here is now I'm taking this number and I'm multiplying it by itself six times. So what this means is three squared multiplied by three squared times three squared So you can see the repetition that happens. Whatever's inside of my parentheses, I'm going to multiply it by itself six different times. Now the next thing we should remember to do the product rule, we also need to know, the, uh, or sorry, to do the pro power rule, we also need to know the product rule, which states if I have a number x to the m times x to the n, then I'm going to add my exponents. So if I add all of my exponents here, what I'll end up with is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 3 to the 12th power. Now that's going to be a really big number. I can't calculate that in my head, sorry. Um, however, we don't, to, uh, to do that, you can do that in your own calculator. But what I want you to do is show you the shortcut. Instead of doing all this, we can just say that, well, whenever I have an exponent raised to an exponent, I can use 3 of 2 times 6, which equals 3 to the 12th power. So that's your shortcut. Um, now let's go and take a look at a couple examples of how we can apply this. So over here, I have x squared raised to the 8th power. So all I need to do is just say x to the 2 times 8, which equals x to the 16th power. Now here, I have 3 times a to the 5th times b to the 4th. One thing we need to make sure that we remember that with the power rule, if you have x to the m, y, to the p raised to the n. Well, that means this n goes to both of these exponents. So you got to make sure you distribute your exponent to both of your terms. So that'd be x to the m times n and y to the p times n. So therefore, I need to say 3 to the 4th power times a to the 5 times 4 and b to the 4th power. So therefore, 3 to the third power, um, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is going to be 81, then a to the 5 times 4 is a to the 20th power, and then b to the 4th. Okay? Next one, or remember our distributed property. We've got to distribute this exponent to all of my terms. I don't care if it's in the numerator or it's in the denominator, you've got to make sure you distribute. So I have x to the 3 times 4, 2 to the 4th power, y to the 5 times 4, and z to the 8 times 4. So now, when I reduce this, I have x to the 3 times 4, which is x to the 12th, over 2 to the 4th power, which ends up being 16, y to the 5 times 4 is y to the 20th, and z to the 37th. Okay, then to go ahead and complete this problem over here, um, now notice it's a negative exponent. So what happens with negative exponents, remember, is our negative property. We said x to the negative m equals 1 over x to the m. Well, instead of changing that up like this, what I'd like to do is um, just distribute using my power rule first, and then I can go and change it. So what I have is 2 to the negative third power x to the negative third power, y to the 2 times negative, I'm thinking ahead, negative third power, all over x to the negative third power times negative 3, and y to the negative fourth times negative 3. 
So I made sure I distributed all this, and then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to evaluate it and see what it looks like. So 2 to the negative third power is going to be 1 over, um, it's going to be 2 to the negative third power is 1 over 2 to the third power. So it should be 1 eighth. Okay, so now my 8 I know is going to be on the denominator. x to the negative third power is going to be x to the negative third is going to be 1 over x cubed. So I'm going to write my x cubed on the bottom. y, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So therefore, y to the negative 6 would be 1 over y to the 6. And then on the bottom here, I'll have x to the negative 3 times negative 3, which will be to the positive 9. So um, therefore, that's going to stay on the bottom, x to the, to the 9th. And then here, I'll have y to the 12th. Hope that's still on. Good. Well, if you guys look at this, now I have these exponents are multiplied, and I can actually add them. So this is all 1 over 8 to the x3 times 9, which is x to the 12th, y to the 18th. So we got to be very careful when we're doing this problem to notice that there's a couple ways you can do this. You could um, you know, flip these all around and see where they're at, or as long as I did is just distribute this with my negative sign, I, or I'm sorry, my negative exponent, I just distributed it to every term, and then I evaluated what it was. And if it was negative, I made sure I put it to the, on its reciprocal. So if it was negative up top, I made sure I put it on the bottom so I'd have a positive exponent. And if it was negative on the bottom, I made sure I put it up top. But what we notice is these were both a negative times a negative, so they remain positive, so I left them on as my denominator. So now what I'd like to do is give you guys a couple example problems for you to do on your own, and then I'll come back and I'll give you some tips and some hints, and then I'll show you how to do the problems. Okay, here's some example problems. Write these down. Try them out. Okay, hopefully that was enough time for you to get those down. Um, what I like to do is just kind of go through these by using the power rule. And, you know, there's not really a couple tricks that I, or tips I really have. We just need to make sure we're just applying this rule correctly. Um, however, for this last problem, I will show you two different ways we can write this or solve this problem. But let's just go back through the basics again. Remember, when I have a number raised to another exponent, I multiply across. So this can be written as a to the 5 times 7, which is a to the 35th. Here, I need to make sure I distribute my 5 to each one of these terms. So I have 2 to the 5th power, x to the 5th, and y to the 6th times 5. 2 to the 5th power is 32. y to the 5th power, I'm sorry, that's x to the 5th power, and then y to the 30th. Here, I need to make sure I distribute this 3 to each one of my terms, even if it's a term on the denominator. So I have negative 2 to the third power, x to the 0 times 3, y to the 6 times 3, and 0 to the, let's just write z with a 1, 1 times 3. So you guys understand where I get that 3 when I leave it there. And then I have over y to the 4 times 3. So now I can just multiply these. Negative 2 times itself 3 times is negative 8 x to the 0 times 3, 0 times 3 is obviously going to be 0. x raised to the 0 power is 1, so therefore, I can just put a 1 there, or uh, there's no point in putting a 1 there, so I'll just move on. My x is up top, cancel out. y to the 6 times 3 is y to the 18th, z to the 3rd, all over x to the 12th. Okay, now, I showed you last time you can just distribute this negative 2 to all these powers, and that's perfectly fine. Here's another way. Let's write this with a positive exponent. So to write this with a positive exponent, what I can do is I can use the reciprocal of this fraction and write it as the positive. So therefore, I can say x, um, x to the negative 3y squared all over 3 to the x to the 4th, negative 4th, Squared. 
So now what happens is what I've done is I just took the reciprocal of this. So now instead of a negative exponent, it's to the positive exponent. I'm still going to get the exact same answer, but if you notice when I distribute, I have 3 um, to the negative second x to the negative 4 times negative 2 y to the negative second all over x to the negative 3 times negative 2 and y to the 2 times negative 2. Here, I'm doing the exact same thing, pretty much 2 times negative 3, y to the 2 times 2, all over 3 squared, x to the negative 4 times 2, and y to the second. Now, a lot of people just like to prefer to do it this way because they like dealing with positive, ex positive exponents. But that's fine. But if you notice, it doesn't matter if I'm multiplying a negative times a negative um, or a positive times a negative. I'm still going to have to deal with my negative exponents. So 3 to the negative second power is going to be 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. So I'm just going to kind of two these together. My 9 is going to be on the denominator. Or if you notice over here, I already have 3 squared, which is on the denominator. Um, x to the negative 4 times negative 2 is going to be a positive x, so I have x to the 8th. And then I'll have y squared down here, because that's a negative. Up here I have x to the 3 times negative 2, which is x to the 6th. And then y to the 2 times negative 4, which is a y to the 2 to the negative 4, so that means my y has to come up to my numerator. Or if you look over this example, I show that it's y to the 4th in my numerator. Um, so now I can simplify these by using my uh, quotient property. Whenever I have an exponent divided by another exponent, that means I can subtract those two exponents. So here I have x to the 8th minus x to the 6th, so that's going to leave me x squared, and this will leave me y to the 4 minus 2, which would be y squared. So my final answer would be x squared y squared all over 9. So ladies and gentlemen, that's how we use the power rule of exponents. I hope all these examples helped you out. Um, just remember to uh, review this video if you need any questions. And always message me if you have any other uh, questions. You can also see all my other tutorials on www.freemathvideos.com.